In the realm of metaphysics and ancient wisdom, there exists a profound principle that unveils the intimate relationship between the microcosm and the macrocosm. It is a principle that illuminates the interconnectedness of our individual existence with the vast expanse of the universe itself. By exploring this enchanting dance between the small and the vast, we uncover profound insights into the nature of our reality and our place within it. Imagine the intricate web of connections that permeate our reality. At the smallest scale we find the microcosm, the intricate workings of our minds, bodies and souls. It is within this realm that the essence of who we are resides. The firing of neurons within our brains, the pulsing of blood through our veins, the very thoughts and emotions that define our being. This is the realm where the microcosm finds its expression. Yet it does not end there. No, for we are not isolated beings adrift in an ocean of chaos. Beyond the boundaries of our individual existence lies the macrocosm, the vast expanse of the universe itself. It extends far beyond what our eyes can perceive, transcending the confines of physical objects and celestial bodies. It encompasses the boundless realms of energy, consciousness, and the interconnectedness of all things. It is within this grand panorama that we find the reflections of our own being, a harmonious interplay of energies resonating with the essence of our struggles, our aspirations, and our very essence. The principle of as above, so below, as within, so without, beckons us to recognize the profound interplay between these two realms. It is a call to open our eyes and see the interconnectedness that permeates all aspects of existence. In recognizing this truth, we realize that just as the divine mind of the universe is the source of creation, so too can we shape and mold our own personal minds. If we accept that our thoughts possess the power to create, the first step is to guard our thoughts diligently. The mind is a garden, and our thoughts are its seeds. While it may initially appear that thoughts emerge uncontrollably, it is within your power to accept or reject their validity. Envision yourself within a vast expanse of collective existence. Above and surrounding you, thoughts, ideas, beliefs and more float, awaiting your attention. The key lies in consciously selecting and embracing those that resonate with your aspirations, those that you wish to manifest in your life. Just as you stand before a table adorned with an array of tools, you choose the precise ones necessary to shape your creation. It is a simple act of discernment, allowing you to curate your path and bring forth the results you seek. The ancient wisdom embodied in the Hermetic Law of Correspondence challenges the popularized and often misinterpreted notion of the Law of Attraction, urging us to delve deeper into the inner workings of unity and self-reflection. Unfortunately, the law of attraction has often been distorted and exploited by marketing schemes, pseudoscientific claims, and the sensationalism of the New Age movement. It has been presented as a magical shortcut to success, promising effortless manifestation of our every desire, while discouraging profound introspection and personal growth. Yet the roots of this concept run deeper, reaching back into the annals of ancient wisdom Rather than reducing it to wishful thinking, the principle of correspondence calls for a deeper exploration of our existence. It invites us to go beyond surface-level desires and materialistic pursuits, and instead, explore the interconnected nature of our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. The principle of correspondence proclaims that the macrocosm and the microcosm are not separate entities, but reflections of each other akin to a mirror that reveals their inherent similarity. In contemplating this principle, we recognize the vast expanse of the macrocosm, the realm of the grand and majestic, governed by the laws that shape the creation we perceive as external to ourselves. It encompasses the totality of everything, the laws that govern the workings of the universe on a grand scale. On the other hand, we have the microcosm, the realm of the minute and individuated, where the components come together to form the whole. It represents the aggregate of the individual units that collectively comprise the greater reality. 
The microcosm and the macrocosm are inseparable, intertwined in their essence. As one ebbs and flows, so does the other. By reflecting upon the principle of correspondence, we are reminded of the fractal nature of our reality. Fractals, those mesmerizing patterns that repeat infinitely, offer a glimpse into the underlying order and harmony that permeate creation. From the spirals of seashells to the branching of trees, we witness the replication of these self-similar patterns on different scales. It is as if the universe is whispering its secrets to us, inviting us to recognize the interconnectedness and unity that underlies all things. From the Fibonacci sequence to the structure of atoms, solar systems and galaxies, we witness the recurrence of these patterns. Pulling back the veil, we discover the same underlying structure replicated across different scales. Fractals, as self-replicating patterns, are observable in various aspects of nature. Consider the example of a forest. When we walk through the forest, we see individual trees, each with its own unique characteristics. However, when we ascend above the forest in an airplane, the individuality of the trees disappears, and we perceive a vast expanse of green. Zooming in on a single tree or zooming out to observe the entire forest showcases the self-similar patterns within nature. This exemplifies the principle of correspondence, as above, so below. Explore the branching structure of a river system. From a bird's eye view, as the river winds its way through the landscape, it branches out into smaller tributaries, creeks, and streams. These tributaries, in turn, further divide into even smaller channels and rivulets. Each level of branching resembles the larger structure, forming a self-similar pattern. Now, let's shift our perspective to the intricate network of our circulatory system. The human blood vessels follow a similar branching pattern. Starting with the main arteries and veins, they progressively divide into smaller vessels, arterioles and capillaries, reaching every nook and cranny of our bodies. This fractal-like arrangement allows for efficient transport of oxygen, nutrients, and waste products throughout our system. These examples emphasize that the principle of correspondence goes beyond mere metaphorical language. It demonstrates the inherent fractal nature of reality, where patterns repeat across various scales and domains. Whether we explore the vast reaches of the universe or delve into the intricacies of our own bodies, we encounter echoes of similar patterns, structures, and functions. Imagine the ancient symbol of the Euroboros, the serpent devouring its own tail. It represents the cyclical nature of life, the unity of beginnings and endings. In its symbolism, we find resonance with the principle of correspondence. The Euroboros reflects the eternal dance between the microcosm and the macrocosm, encapsulating the intricate relationship between the individual and the cosmos. Within its mystical coils, we discover a profound truth. The ending at the same time is the beginning of something else, and what is above is below, in an eternal loop of interconnectedness. This continuous cycle unfolds endlessly, echoing the cosmic rhythm that reverberates throughout existence. The Euroboros invites us to contemplate the unending flow of creation, where each ending is a new beginning, and every beginning holds the promise of transformation. Within this principle lies a profound teaching. Every situation, every experience, serves as a catalyst for growth and learning. It beckons us to recognize that both inner and outer realities are reflections of our own thoughts, beliefs, and actions. By embracing this understanding, we shift our perspective from victimhood to empowerment, understanding that we hold the power to shape our experiences. Often, our journey towards recognizing correspondence begins by acknowledging the difficult and challenging aspects of our lives. Instead of avoiding or denying them, we learn to embrace them as valuable lessons. The mirror of reality reflects our thoughts, emotions, and choices back to us, inviting us to take responsibility for our own creation. Our inner world is reflected in the outer world, and vice versa. What we perceive as reality corresponds to our beliefs and agreements, which are often shaped by societal conditioning, 
upbringing, and personal experiences. Just as a seed holds within it the potential to grow into a fruitful tree, our beliefs and agreements shape our perceived reality. The outer world we perceive is intricately tied to our inner convictions. The principle of correspondence invites us to examine the deeply ingrained beliefs that have limited and blocked us. By becoming aware of these unconscious seeds, we gain the opportunity to plant new ones aligned with our conscious desires. However, the journey of transformation requires more than surface-level visualization and positive thinking. It calls for a courageous exploration of our past and the roots of our beliefs. Neuroscience and psychological theories shed light on the significance of childhood experiences in shaping our adult lives. The unconscious mind, as described by Freud and Jung, holds suppressed contents and archetypal information that influence our perceptions and behaviors. To bring about true change, we must venture into the depths of our being, peering into the hidden corners we have long ignored. By delving into our earliest memories and experiences, we unveil the origin of traumas, blockages, and suppressed emotions that continue to manifest in our lives. Acknowledging and giving permission for these suppressed beliefs to surface is the first step toward healing and transformation. We embark on a journey to meet our inner child, to address unmet needs and provide the love and nurturing we may have longed for in the past. As we tend to these neglected parts of ourselves, the seeds of old beliefs lose their power and cease to be the principle of correspondence that shapes our reality. Attempting to supplement conscious beliefs without penetrating the unconscious, where years of suppression lie, is akin to growing oranges from apple seeds, an exercise in futility. This journey into the unseen, the aspects we have concealed as a protective mechanism, demands immense creativity. For instance, if we find ourselves attracting relationships that make us feel invisible or unworthy, we must bypass external distractions and delve into the depths of our being. When was the first time I felt this way? Here, we uncover the numerous instances in which we were neglected as children, when our worth was questioned and our emotions went unnoticed. We realize that our range of feelings is limited, constrained to beliefs that we are unworthy inadequate, undeserving of love, or that our emotions hold no significance. These are the seeds we have sown, the stories we have long believed. Writing down our desires, fears, and limiting beliefs can serve as a powerful tool for self-reflection and self-transformation. By examining what we don't want and contrasting it with what we truly desire, we gain clarity and insight into our deepest aspirations. Through this process, we can consciously act toward ourselves, acknowledging and addressing the unattended needs and beliefs that have shaped our reality.